So if you're not new to my channel, you probably have seen that I've done a few videos comparing the Canon XF400 to the Sony NX80. Um, or actually, I should say, I've done a few videos about each camera, and then I compare the low-light performance between the two cameras. Right now, um, I know you guys are curious about what I think, or what I think, or which I think is the best camera to use, period. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. If you've been watching my channel, you notice I've done quite a few videos on the Sony NX80 and the Canon XF400. <clears throat> I spoke about both of them kind of independently on numerous occasions. I also compared the low light between these cameras. And now I want to talk more about the cameras overall, both of them. Let's talk about both of them at the same time to just see like which one is really better. Which one is better? You know, let's talk about it. So you guys might already know I do a lot of live events. So I shoot a lot of weddings primarily, but I also shoot small commercials and um, <clears throat> I also shoot small films and documentaries. If you want to watch any of my films that I've done, that I've did, that I've did. If you want to watch any of the films that I've done, check out my channel. There's a playlist for my films, some documentaries in there, and a couple of short films. But anyway, and of course, I didn't use the, these cameras to shoot those types of videos. I used something else. But let's just talk about what I have been using this camera for. And like I said, it's been commercials and it's been weddings. And overall, I would, I'm just going to start here. I would say that the Canon has really surprised me in terms of the image quality. And right now I'm actually using the Canon XF400 to shoot this. <clears throat> the image quality in this camera is outstanding. Uh, for a one inch sensor camera, I didn't expect it to look so good. Like it really is an amazing image, amazing. And even when you're in low light situations, it still holds the quality of the image very well. But where it fails, is the battery life is not the greatest. Um, I wish they would have chose to use a bigger type of battery in this camera. Like it's basically using the batteries you would put in one of their smaller consumer cameras. It doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. Like they should have, it should be using a bigger battery so it could get, you know, four hours of battery life. And it doesn't get that, you know, with the little stock battery, you get like an hour and a half or something. I think it says two hours in the manual, but you're not really, you're not really getting two hours. You get like an hour and a half or something like that. Really not the greatest. Um, so you're swapping batteries often with this camera. The Sony though, that battery, you can, you can buy a bigger battery for the Sony and it holds, it holds the charge, I feel like for six hours or something. Like once you get the extended battery, it's like six hours battery, like for five hours or something like that. It's good. It's good, whatever it is. I think it's six hours. I think it's six hours. It's really good. Like you can shoot with like almost one battery for the whole, for the whole wedding day and be okay. But definitely you bring two and you're good. You don't have to worry about bringing a charger. You're not going to be swapping batteries, you know, in the charger like I have to do for the Canon. You know, I bring like four batteries and I'm just constantly swapping them, which is a little annoying. So there's that. But the image quality in the Sony is definitely not as good as the Canon. Even when you're outdoors like this, and bright sunlight, to me, the Sony's, it looks very good. Don't get me wrong, it looks very good, but it doesn't look excellent like the Canon looks. The Canon looks excellent, the Sony looks very good. Certainly usable. I think anybody who sees the footage is gonna be like, oh wow, this looks good. But you know, when you have like that, you, you have the eye of a professional, you could just see things and you'd be like, oh yeah, there's some artifacts there though, you know, it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little dicey in the shadows, you know, a little grain there. It's just, it's not as good as the Canon, but still very good. Don't get me wrong. Um, <clears throat> other than that, I would say that the Canon is very menu driven uh, to operate. Most things you have to access through the menus. You know, you want to turn your peak in on and off, menus. Zebras on and off, menus. But most things you got to operate through the menus, white balance, all that. You can't, you can't even change the white balance when you're recording, which is annoying to me. Because sometimes once I start recording, especially a wedding, sometimes you're rushing. So you start recording and then you, you realize like 10 minutes later, oh man, the white balance is totally off. Oh man, I got the, the wrong white balance on here. But you can't, you can't change it. 
you would have to stop recording. And a lot of times I can't stop recording. So now you just got a funky white balance the whole way through, which kind of sucks. With the Sony, you can, manu you can get a manual white balance while you're recording. Um, but the way you white balance on the Sony is a little awkward too. You can change the Kelvin if you want, but you have to go into the menu to do it. And there's like a few steps to do it. It's really awkward. It's really annoying. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can change it while you're recording, but the way you change the white balance on the Sony is it's just not very good. So there is that. So white balance with both cameras have issues to me. I, I don't like it on either camera. It's just very awkward. What I do like about the Sony is it has individual buttons for your um, aperture, um, ISO slash gain, and shutter controls. And on the Canon, you have to you have to hit a button and scroll through which one you want to change, and then you change it with a dial. So it's a little quicker to operate on the Sony when you when you're trying to change your exposure than on the Canon. But it's not really that. Once you get used to just hitting the custom button on the on the the Canon. You get used to it, it's not that bad. Um, but I still think the Sony's a little faster. Um, I really like with the Canon that you have the integrated um, lens cover that's just designed right into the hood. On the Sony, you don't have that. You have like a little lens cap that's really easy to, to lose. I haven't lost it yet, so, and I, like I said, I had it for six months and I haven't lost it, so that's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> what else about them? I mean, they both have excellent zoom, uh, which I really like about both of them. Um, they could both do 4K. The Canon has an edge on the Sony though, because it could do 4K 60 in 150 megabits per second. And the Sony is limited to 4K 30 at 100 megabits per second. So there is that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that's really, that's really about it. Like those are the major things that really stand out to me on these cameras. Obviously, they both have the XLR inputs, you know, both you could turn up and down through uh, dials, which is which is really, really nice. Um, the Sony has a switch for an attenuator right on the handle to to get to the attenuating sense settings on the Canon. You have to go through menus. And again, like when you're recording, you can't change these things like when you record on the on the Canon, there's very little you can change. You could really change your exposure. Uh, and that's really it. You're not, you can't really change much. But on the Sony, when you're recording, you can still get to all these settings. And that, that to me is important. So, with that being said, you know, which one is better? Which one do I prefer? And honestly, uh, <laughs> I don't love either one, to be honest. I really don't. But if I could only choose one, I would probably choose the Canon just for the superior image quality, I would probably choose the Canon and the, the better low light performance. I would probably choose the Canon. But depending on what you're doing, I can certainly understand why people would choose the Sony. It's cheaper. Um, it's, it's really close to being just as good, but just not quite because of that image quality. But they're, they're both very, very similar cameras. You know, you just have to weigh out, does that extra image quality matter to you? Because if you're in situations where you can control the lighting, the Sony, you can make it look pretty good. You know what I'm saying? You can do a lot to it. You can go in and you can customize all the settings. You can customize the black levels, the knee, which is the highlights, the way they roll off and stuff. Um, you can control the colors, saturation, contrast. You can do all that stuff on the Sony. You can control the yellows, the greens, you know, independently. wasn't a good place to shoot in. By the way, right now I'm shooting with the SF400 in auto mode because I want to see how well the auto mode works because I might use the auto mode at my next wedding instead of putting it in manual and then when the clouds are in and out, you know what I mean? It just, you get screwed up. So anyways, so let's just keep going here. So overall, I would choose the Canon, but it's just by, by like a little, it just edges it out just a little bit. Um, and like I said, just for the image quality, it's not for the usability, it's not for the speed, because I feel the Sony is faster to use overall, 
than the Canon because it has more buttons on it because of the, the menu system. I think the menu system actually in the, the Canon is laid out better. But like I said, you can't access it while you're shooting, which sucks. And you have to do almost everything through it. Where with the Sony, you can access things through quick buttons. So anyway, that's about it. So just in a nutshell, what I told you, that's why I feel the Canon is just a little bit better than the Sony. But of course, if budget is, a, is an issue, you might have to get the Sony because it just happens to be cheaper. But also keep in mind that Canon now has like the XA, what, 50, 45, and 40. And I think out of those three, I think two of them still have a one inch sensor. I think one of them has a half inch. So be careful with that because you're not gonna get this image quality that, that I'm talking about unless you get the one inch sensor. So you gotta make sure you get that one. You can save a little bit of money because it's, it's not gonna have the Wi-Fi in it like this one does. And it's not gonna have like the live streaming capability that this one has. But if you don't need those features, then get one of the, the other models that I mentioned to save a little money. And even the Sony has a newer model, which I think is called the MC, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's the MC something. But you gotta be careful with that one because it doesn't have 4K, which is, just insane to me. So they, they've made a Sony that's like the NX80, looks just like it, has a lot of the same features, but it's not 4K. So if you want 4K, you might not want that camera. It's not 4K, it doesn't have the live streaming capabilities either. Um, and maybe a few other things. They gear it toward like uh, uh, schools and government work. I think that's what it says in the description. So it's like a very simple camera. But if all you need is something very simple, you know, cause I don't know what, you know, cause maybe you are doing something for school, you're doing instructional videos for your classroom or something. You don't need 4K, you don't need live streaming. You don't need super zoom features like the NX80 has. Then you might want to look into it. Just a suggestion, it's way cheaper. Anyway, that's about it. Any gear that I use to shoot these episodes is down in the description below. Um, anything that I talk about in these episodes is down in the descriptions below. Please subscribe to my channel for videos just like this where I'm reviewing equipment, where I'm talking about accessories for video production and everything else under the sun. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Turner and I guess I'll see you soon.